Hi, I'm Captain Mike. Uh, today I'm going to do a little tutorial on um, making a wickless candle, sort of. Uh, back in the day when I was doing a lot of candles, I had a good many requests for candles that didn't have a flame. It seems that a lot of dorms will not allow open flames uh, in the rooms, and a lot of hotels won't. So there were parents that wanted to get some nice smelling candles for the, the students and uh, so they requested it and I come up with this. Now I think everybody does it now uh, but it's very simple to do it. I'm going to show you how I do it and um, uh, you know maybe you can take something away uh, from this tutorial and it'll help you do the same. Now the containers that you can use for wickless candles they, they're endless. I try to keep them small uh, there's a small glass one. There's a, what I, my standard candle is made in a glass one like this. And then you have them that are in these uh, tins. The tins are the most popular because they don't break. Uh, you know, students can knock one of these off of the nightstand or whatever and break it. Uh, but these tins won't break. And so they're by far the best for making a wickless candle. By a wickless candle, I mean one that has no wick whatsoever in it. Uh, this one, as you can see, has a wick in it. But it's going to look just like this, except it doesn't have a wick. And I know you're going to ask yourself, and you're going to ask me, well, how do you melt the darn thing? How do, how, how do you get the fragrance from the candle? One of these. This is a coffee warmer, and they work really, really good. They will not get, actually they won't get coffee hot, so hot you can't hardly drink it. So you can imagine what they will do for a candle. It won't get too terribly hot and cause it to smoke. Now, these come sort of like this, and they call them candle warmers. My daughter bought this for me in Texas. She run up on a whole case of them, some Goodwill or someplace, and she bought them all for me. But I have seen these sell at Dollar Tree and other places. Walmart, of course, carries them, and they'll be, they'll be labeled as coffee warmers or whatever. But it's the same thing as this. 110 volts, you plug it in the wall. Now, it's worth noting that soy, which is what we use for the candle medium, regardless of whether they're wicked or not wicked, uh, melts at about 130 to 140 degrees, uh, depending, of course, on the temperature and ambient uh, humidity and all that good stuff. But that's not so hot that you can't get it on your skin, you know, or it spill on your skin and hurt you. In fact, I recommend that you use this for hand lotion. When it gets fully melted, you dip your hands in it and you do this, and it makes a great moisturizing lotion. It's never too hot. 130 to 140 degrees. Now, what you have to do, I usually make a lot of these at one time, so my formulas are going to be kind of uh, off the hip, okay? Uh, these containers, get online and just type in your browser, type in 10 candle containers, and you're going to pull these up. They're not really expensive, but you will pull them up. The only thing I can say about these tins are they did easily if you're going to resell them, so you have to be careful. And also, you want to store the tins somewhere there's low humidity because they will rust. Whatever kind of stuff they have on the outsides will go away, and you can see a little bit right there on that one. And uh, it'll they'll rust a little bit. Not a big deal, but you won't want to sell them like that. So here's what I do. Uh, it takes between five and six ounces to fill this up. So if you just want to make one, you weigh yourself out five or six ounces of soy wax. And then you microwave it. And that's what I do. Now you can do it on a hot plate, there's a lot of different ways, but I microwave this stuff until it's liquid. Then I add the fragrance and a little color if you want, not necessary. Too much color will inhibit the burning of a candle. It doesn't mess too much with it if you're just going to do the, the melt. Uh, and we'll get to put one of these together here in just a second, but I want to say one other thing uh, about, uh, about the candles. What I need to tell you is that uh, people 
do not properly burn candles. I want to give you a little tip so that if you buy candles from someone, you'll get the best results. And it works even on these right here. My candles are formulated for this diameter. If you get a bigger diameter, you've got to change out the wicks. You're going to have to experiment and determine what wick works for the diameter container you get. That's an important tip. But this is a, uh, a 104 wick, uh, which means nothing to anybody but me. But uh, from the, I think the company I bought them from is out of business, but it was their 104 wick. Uh, and if you do, if you use any one of these, it doesn't matter. The length has nothing to do with it, only the width. You light the candle and be prepared to let this candle burn for a while. What you want it to do is form a full melt pool. That's very important. Once you get a full melt pool, then the candle is wicked properly and it will burn all the way down. Let that can anytime after you have a full melt pool, you can blow it out if you want to. Uh, but make sure that it has a full melt pool before you blow it out. Uh, if you leave it burning, and I test all mine this way, I just let them burn all the way down, and they will not smoke, soy will not smoke, until it gets down close to the bottom of that metal tab, and it gets hot. Uh, it would be the same for one of these if it was wickless. If you have a wickless one, it's the same thing. You put it on your pot, or on your warmer, and just, of course, it's not as important as with a flame. Just let it melt, but you don't want it to get way down low. Once it gets low, change it out, okay? That's my tip on these. Now, with that said, uh, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to zap some soy wax and then we're going to come back and we're going to pour this one up. Okay. okay, we're back with you. It took about nine minutes and I think three, three minute intervals in the microwave uh, to melt this soy wax. Um, I really can't tell you how hot that is there. I could put a thermometer in it, but the point is moved. Uh, you, however, you it may not be moved. You are not really supposed to heat this over 200 degrees. So, if you have a thermometer, check it. Make sure you don't. You know, when it's liquefied, it's not over that. And uh, you know, somewhere around 140, 150 degrees. They say the FO mix is good. I don't pay attention to that. I just when this stuff becomes liquid. I pour the fragrant oil, the essential oil, whatever I'm going to use into the, the wax and uh, the color and stir it all up. Now I'm going to say one word of caution here. It's really nice to use Pyrex. I've used it a lot, but I've also had Pyrex blow up in the microwave. Do not know why, but I have had it bust. And I have had some types of plastic kind of want to melt. So all plastic is not the same. These little things come from Walmart, I think, a set of three. They have always performed well for me. They're cheap. I keep two or three sets of them around all the time to measure anything from wax to light or whatever I'm doing, I'm, I, I will measure it in it. But with that said, we have, we have the liquid here, approximately five to six ounces. It may be a little more, not a problem. First thing I do is I take the fragrant oil. Now, again, let me insert something right here. This is for a one candle. You're gonna have to do the math. Get online, find out what they recommend, how much fragrant oil or how much EO, essential oil, they recommend for X amount of wax, paraffin wax, soy wax, whatever the heck you're gonna use. Find that out and experiment and find out what you like. That is about two tenths of an ounce. Because I didn't set it on grams, I set it on two tenths of an ounce. That's about right. Doesn't look like much, but it's going to stink his candle up really good. So I dump that in there. Unceremoniously, I just dump it in. Bamboo skewers love these things. And I stir it all up. And this is kind of important here. You want to just stir and stir and stir. You got plenty of working time. It takes a while for this stuff to start setting up. So you want to stir it really, really good. Make sure you have it incorporated into the wax. Uh, if you don't, it might come to the top and kind of look funky. And if you put too much in there, it might come to the top. Those are indications that something's wrong. If, if, the, if your uh, scent comes to the top and kind of looks oily on there, then kick back on some of it. Just remelt the whole thing and start over. But once you get it kind of mixed up, now this is where you can add color. I hardly ever, ever add color to any of my stuff. Just quit doing it. 
no particular reason, uh, but you can use uh, all kinds of colors made for wax or soap. It doesn't matter to me. I use oxides. But it doesn't take much. This is orange, and the reason that I'm going to put orange in it is that the fragrance we're using is uh, mandarin orange, uh, and this is a really good smelling uh, fragrance. I've got the whole shop stinking up real good. I'll enjoy that for the rest of the afternoon. And so I just start off with just a little bit, not much, just a little bit, and then stir it up and see if it's going to work. It takes a while to get this mixed in. And I think I had this problem once before. This, this actually is designed for soap and it's an oil based and so it takes a long time to, to color and I'm not going to put any more in here because I don't want to. It is mixing on up. Uh, oxides mix real quick. Uh, but there again, you put too much color if you're wicking this candle and it's going to uh, it's going to affect how it burns. So, we're just going to go with that. It's just kind of an off color yellow. And I just pour it straight into whatever container I'm going to use, right up close to the top. All right. That's it. If I had to wick it, it would be different. I would wick it. I made an, a video on how to make a small soy candle, and I showed you a few tricks on that. On this, this is all there is. Soy wax doesn't tunnel very much, which means as it cools, it doesn't form a depression in the middle. Sometimes it might, depending on the weather. But most of the time, it's just as flat as it can be, just like that. So that's it. That is my tutorial on how to make a wickless candle. And yes, I know it is no different than a tart burner or one of those things that my wife uses all the time. It is no different, with the exception that you'll be using this swell coffee warmer in its dual purpose. See, and that's great. And you can walk by there once in a while, stick your finger in it. See, it's not too hot. See, you didn't hear me scream or anything. That's it. And your hands is going to smell whatever, like whatever your favorite fragrance is all day long. And see, there's no wax. There's nothing on it. It smells good, too. Mm, I like mandarin orange. All right, folks, that's it. If you have any questions about this procedure or what I do or what I use, uh, put it in the comments below. I'll get back to you, and we'll work it all out. I'm Captain Mike. Appreciate you all watching my video. Till next time, I'm out of here.